So it turns out that Sora has a secret superpower, and it's one that I'm not even sure that OpenAI knew it had. It is, dare I say, a game changer. Now, is this superpower worth $200 a month? Well, that is the million dollar question, or rather the $200 question, but that doesn't sound quite as impressive, does it? Okay, let's go check it out. So kicking off, I do want to briefly talk about Sora as a whole. In my last video, my first look at Sora, I did say that I was going to come back with a full and comprehensive review on it. And I'm gonna be honest here, I struggled with that. My initial outputs and tests were, to put it mildly, not great. To clear the air, and in case you weren't aware, the version of Sora that we got is not the daddy model that we have seen publicly displayed over the last 10 months. In fact, just a day before Sora's official release, there was some suspiciously leaked bootleg footage of Sora from an event in London in October. And this is the version of Sora that I think we were all expecting. And that is obviously not what we got. And just to be clear, I don't consider this a bait and switch. In the weeks leading up to the Sora release, OpenAI was pretty forward with the fact that we were getting a turbo model, not, you know, Big Daddy Sora. And that version of Sora does exist. It's just kind of cordoned off, you know, because it's really, really expensive. And Sora Jr., at least in its current state, is, well, it's not really that great. There are lots of interesting things about it, but, you know, I mean, obviously prompt coherence and image referencing are not two of them. As we saw in the previous video, Sora is you know, plenty capable of just being morphy and decoherent. And in the case of image to video, it will often just kind of wander off into its own direction. That said, in every output, there was some little nugget of gold. And that's the thing that really kept me digging because I really did not want to do a Sora hit piece like so many of the other like AI commenting lynch mob is doing right now. So in just a few days, I literally burned through all of my credits and I am now officially abusing the unlimited buffet. But through all of that testing, I can now confidently say that Sora's real superpower is video to video, and it goes a lot deeper than that. So at baseline, and I do have to note that this is only if you have the pro plan, you do have the ability to upload videos to Sora and utilize the remix function. So kicking off with this mid journey generated image that I then animated in Hilu slash Minimax, uh, we can come down and hit the remix button down here. So giving it a fairly simple prompt of 35 millimeter film grain, IMAX, ultra cinematic and crisp cinematography, uh, we can choose how strong we want to remix this video, uh, obviously all the way from strong to subtle to custom, we'll go over that in just a little bit. But just running this under the strong preset, the results are, I mean, frankly, pretty stunning. Uh, obviously everything is in a photorealistic style now. It is very crisp and sharp. Now there are some inconsistency problems here as we often find with these creative upscalers, namely uh, that, there, well, there's a bit of a stumble in her walk there. We'll take a look at how to fix that in a little bit. And then she was previously wearing a skirt and now she kind of has like these like, like latex biker shorts on. I, I don't know if that exists, but you know, I'm sure you can order them on Timu. Here's another one that really blew me away. This is a shot from Dead Sea, my Pirates versus Vampires short film that I released a while back. So this was done in Kling 1.0, but running that through Sora, this is what comes out. And this is fairly gobsmacking to me. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to show off the grays in my hair and say that to me this feels very much like you know the vhs to dvd moment for those of you old enough to remember that hop continuing on with some other tests this was from the hunyan model that we took a look at a few videos back uh, in that video everyone was really impressed with the uh, fact that her watch stayed consistent as it was moving back and forth and the physics with her hair how that actually matched to the movement of her and nobody noticed anything else so running that through sora on a mild remix, uh, we end up with this as a result where, yeah, I mean, again, the hair physics, actually the hair improved, come to think of it. Um, the watch still remaining consistent with her hand and not morphing out. And just to kind of quickly show off how the remix strength affects your output, I took this video, which uh, obviously began as a mid-journey image, and then uh, I believe animated in Hilu, um, ran that with a strong remix, which came out like this, kind of cool, a little bit over the top. But on a mild remix, things came out a little bit too watercolory. Um, it looks, yeah, it just 
it just kind of looks off. I'm not saying that, I mean, this could be a cool style that you could use for something. It's just not necessarily what I was looking for. Now you can run custom strengths here, kind of like something in between strong and mild uh, if you set it to six. I do find myself very much wishing that there was like a 5.5 though. That said, running it at six, uh, I mean, the results are pretty good. Now where I think things get pretty wild with this is when you utilize your own video footage. Uh, for example, this is some footage that I shot of me uh, walking around utilizing the Skyglass app. I've gone over that a number of times before. In this case, I was utilizing a preset that kind of has a very like fifth element kind of vibe to it. Uh, and then running that through Sora's remix, I mean, to be completely honest, Sora kind of did me dirty here and turned me into like an old British reporter. I look like David Attenborough's son reporting on the extinction of man from the future. Now, if that stab to the vanity mirror does really hurt, you could always prompt out of it. Like in this case, uh, I just reprompted it for a young and handsome detective. And now I look like, I don't know, like teenage Daniel Craig. But I do think that the real solution here is to use like a trained character like we can do in, well, most of the video generators at this point. In this case, I took this footage that was generated up in Kling of Me, ran it through Sora for a cinematic coat of paint. Now, obviously Sora is going to scramble my face here, uh, but from here you can just take it over to any face swapper and Bob is your uncle. It's funny, the face swapped version of me actually looks more like me than the trained version of me. I'm definitely gonna have to figure out some kind of workflow here and experiment around with this a little bit. Now, as I always like to stress, is it perfect? No, it is absolutely not. For example, taking this shot this is the opening shot to Dead Sea. This has always been a bit of a problematic shot, mostly because I think it is so dark. Um, but anyhow, running that through Sora with a remix strength of four, we end up with this, which does retain, I mean, obviously the character and the motion. It just kind of looks a little blown out, super grainy. The background definitely ends up kind of looking more like it's uh, like a game engine. Um, yeah, it's just, it's good. It's just kind of a mess at the same time. On a strong remix, we end up with this, which obviously does look a lot better. Um, although to note, it is not the same shot. This is Sora doing its thing where it is inspired by the video input. But I will say that going this route offers far more stability than going the traditional image to video route. Uh, for example, when we do run this as image to video, Sora just ends up casting like pirate Cheech Marin as our main character, Yar essay. But here is where we're gonna start heading into the deep end of the pool because Sora has a powerhouse of a tool in Recut. So kicking off with this stock footage of Office Heartthrob and Drace, giving the intern some beard grooming tips, I ended up kind of turning them into watercolory Game of Thrones characters via the old school Kyber. This is like Kyber 1.0. And running that output through Sora, we now end up with essentially like photorealistic versions of that scene. And let's face it, Andreas still looks just as handsome as before. Now here is where things get pretty interesting because now we can add the recut feature in. This will bring us into our timeline view uh, where we can change the duration. So let's bump this up to 10 seconds. And now we can play with this clip as much as we want. So if we take this up to three seconds, let's just say, and then add a text prompt in here, exterior establishing shot of a dark and foreboding castle in a dark fantasy movie shot on a red camera. Uh, and then we have, you know, Andreas and his intern here. And then I'm gonna follow that up with a shot of in the throne room of a dark fantasy castle in the style of dark fantasy movie. And that gives us this, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it's stylistically consistent. It definitely kind of has the feel of being a TV show, you know, maybe a little bit one on a lower budget, but still let's not forget that this began as stock footage of two guys walking in an office. And what's crazy is that there's another level that we can take all of this to when we bring runway into the mix. Uh, but before we head over there, I did briefly want to mention, I think a lot of you know that I was in New York last month for the LTX community meetup. It was a great event. I really enjoyed hanging out and meeting so many of you. And to note, this is not a sales thing, but I did want to talk about LTX for a minute here. They, yeah, yes, they are sponsoring this video, but they also let me say whatever I want. So I am not going to talk about LTX Studio where you can generate and iterate upon ideas very quickly uh, or how they've integrated Flux as an image generator, nor how you can handle both voice and music right on platform. 
you guys know all of that. Well, maybe you didn't know about Flux and the fact that the video generator actually generates videos faster than you can watch them, which is kind of insane. But since they gave me free reign to talk about whatever I wanted to, and you know, this is the season of giving, I did want to highlight the fact that they, they open source their video model. And I know a lot of you have been wondering, like, what's the deal with that? Well, at the event, I ended up hanging out with Zeb Farman, the CEO of LTX Studio, and well, just asking just that. And honestly, for him, it is about giving back to the communities. He comes from a research background and truly believes the only way for all of us to move forward is to open source. And it's not an accident that the open source model was released time to the community event. Uh, Zev wanted us to be the first to know. So again, this is not a hard sell on LTX Studio, although I, I will point out that Again, with the LTX video model implemented into the platform, it is now uh, the fastest video generator on the market. But again, most of you watching this are familiar with the platform. If you haven't been there in a while, I would recommend swinging by. They've made a lot of improvements. But really what I want to make note of is the fact that they're a really great group and definitely worth supporting. Uh, I mean, can you think of any other AI platform that has open sourced their own model? So big thanks to LTX Studio for giving back to the community and for supporting supporting me here doing all of these crazy AI video experiments. You can check out links to LTX Studio down below and the code for LTX Video link down below as well. So sliding over to Runway Land and seeing how we can bash Sora into this. If you weren't aware, Runway has recently updated their Act 1 model uh, to, I, I would call it Act 2. This new version allows you to input driving, uh, acting, and emoting video into previously generated videos. So revisiting Tuesday, the micro AI short film that I did a while back in which I utilized uh, Skyglass and Domo, my initial thought was just to try to whole hog it into Sora. Uh, the problem is, as uh, you would suspect, uh, Sora ends up getting confused between the two characters. And I, I mean, I kind of end up looking like uh, like Terry Gilliam in drag. So obviously the trick here is to break it down into individual shots. Uh, here we have Malloy. And here's our new version of Tuesday Sinclair. Now, you might run into some consistency problems. So what you can do is take an output that you do like, uh, come down to the recut section. There's a bit of a glitch here, so I'm just gonna kinda trim that out real quick. Uh, move this back, and then we're gonna change our timing out to something like 10 seconds. Um, and then from there, you can run this, and now we've got this 10 second shot of Malloy uh, kind of silently acting. Same thing goes for Tuesday. And again, now we have a 10 second shot of her, you know, emoting to camera. From here, we can bring both shots over to act one. Uh, you can either use your webcam, uh, let's turn that on real quick, or you can, oh, there I am. Whoa, hang on, let's move this back a little bit. Uh, you can either use your webcam, oh, this is weird. And then you can essentially record a performance uh, that you can then generate in gen two. And since you have, uh, well, I generated this up to 15 seconds. So I was able to basically run all of Malloy's lines. I'm sorry, 21 seconds. Uh, so I was able to run all of Malloy's lines. Mr. Malloy. Can I help you? I hear you're a detective, and I am in need of one. Detective? No. Snoop? Maybe. Let's just say I've got a nose for these things. So what's the case? A murder, Mr. Malloy. The thing is, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah? So who's getting iced? Well, that's just the thing, Mr. Malloy. You are. So all in all, Sora in its current state really excels as a creative video upscaler with uh, a lot of muscle behind it. I'm sure as time goes on, things like the text to video and image to video models will improve. Uh, there are still all of the transition blend and cut features that I, I barely have scratched the surface with. Uh, but ultimately, is this worth $200 a month? Well, I mean, that's kind of for you to decide. But again, $200, that's a lot of money. Personally, I would look at it maybe strategically, take a month and generate a bunch of videos on Runway, Luma, Kling, Minimax, I mean, any of them, or even locally, use LTX video. Gather all of that material up and then maybe take it over to Sora for one month at $200 and just, you know, again, just hammer that unlimited. I'll keep playing with Sora. There's definitely a lot more kit bashing that I think is possible here. Uh, I didn't even try running Viggle outputs through it. Uh, a few others of you have asked uh, if I could try out some you know, game footage and or unrendered 3D footage. Be happy to give that a shot as well. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.